All right, so we're going to talk about why we try to fix it and why we can't just listen and hold space and uh, how fixing it gets in the way of connection and safety. And so, Kobe, uh, I know you were a fixer. Um, <laughs> he sometimes <laughs> is a little bit of a fixer upper. Are you a fixer, Ashlyn? Do you do it? I don't think so. No, maybe sometimes. I think my problem is so big and blaring into my face that I haven't even considered Ashlyn's role in, in, in that. Actually, <laughs> it's just been me. Okay. I think so. I'm just going to ask you why do you, why do you do that? Why oh, do you, why do you have to fix things? I and and when we say fix things, we're talking about if Ashlyn's struggling, she has a problem, and she, you know, why why does Kobe have to jump in and? And you make know, it go away. make it go away. <laughs> I, I, and I want to do it before she's even done. Um, and and in truth, I had no idea for so many years. Like all of our marriage, I've been this way. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah. Always been a fixer, and I had no idea until like two months ago, six weeks ago, when you finally said, "Kobe, the reason why you're fixing this is because you're uncomfortable in that conversation." And I was like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" No, I was I was what? trying to help her. <laughs> I was being selfless. No, no, no. no. no I was like, right. that, I was not in denial at all. I was like, oh, oh I'm oh, yeah. so uncomfortable when she's talking like that. Like, oh my gosh. Like, yep. it was like a lightning bolt between the eyes. Like, And this duh, is with any topic. I mean, not any topic, but a lot of topics. Like, if I, throughout our marriage, it's been, if I come to vent about work, or I'm venting about a relationship, or, t you know, sharing with you basically my feelings and how I'm feeling either stressed or... I'm feeling shame. I'm feeling sad, and I'd hand out solutions like it was candy. Yeah, yep. and often oh I will gosh. tell him like, "No, I don't need you to fix it. Just listen." Even after, right. like, oh, even after okay. you told me that. By the well, way. Uh, okay, Ashton, what? Let's dig deeper on that. Why don't you like that? Why don't I like? Yeah. Him why, to... why, why do you want him to just listen? <laughs> well, it shows me he's not listening when he's fixing it, right? Yes, because yeah. he's like already coming up with like, "Are you even listening?" type of thing because you're. You know, in your brain. You know what he's saying to you in a in a subtle roundabout way. He's saying, "I don't really care about you. I care about me. I care about me not being uncomfortable. So I'm going to give you the solution." And so that's why it's hard for for a spouse or you know for the other party because it's like, "Gosh, you're abandoning her in that moment. You feel like you're hanging in there and you're there to fix it and you're you're helping. Like, yeah, but... you're helping." <laughs> But you're not helping. That's not what she's looking for. Man, that's, right? that was that was a perfect way of saying it. And and just to two things about that. Number one, you're totally and completely correct. And number two, I felt Spike having me resist that. Like I'm not being self. No, actually, I am being self because I don't want to be uncomfortable any longer than I have to be. And so that's like totally true. So let me take this selfishness totally to an, to true. another level, okay? Oh, no. and, and really list out why you're being selfish, okay? Um, <laughs> So, uh, one is that you don't like uncomfortableness. So, so you don't want to hang in there while she's being vulnerable. You know, she, she's, she's in pain and she wants you to just empathize with that. And so that, so that's one reason. Another reason why we'll fix it is we want to feel important is, you know, my shame says I'm not good enough and I'll, you know what? I want to show you how awesome I am. I look, look how this. important I am. <laughs> 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 yeah. Can't you see? I got all the answers, you know. So Kobe's silently laughing. Yeah, he, he's turning <laughs> bright red here. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I, like to the T. Yeah. To the T, and that was me for so long, for so long, and it was quite ridiculous, actually. <laughs> and that, and, and in truth, that was part of the reason why both the affairs that I had took place mm -hmm. was exactly what you just said. Yeah. You wanted to be important. Absolutely. Right? You wanted to be valued. And so how you're showing up in your relationship is, Ashlyn, I, I need to see you as important and valued. And, and you didn't go and ask for that vulnerably. You tried to take from her when she was in a, in a vulnerable moment, right? Yeah. And that's why she's saying, you're not, like, it doesn't feel good when you're abandoning, abandoning me right now, right? Oh, my gosh. So, so, so I true. think a good story to share, um, we shared it on our call yesterday, is Sunday with you and mm -hmm. um, kind of that what could have happened and what didn't <laughs> like this shame okay do you want me to just tell it please <laughs> you're like I don't know what you're talking about um, you woke up and you're getting ready for church and you're feeling I'm trying to squeeze into my church pants that I wear like once a week <laughs> that, that I've grown out of like 
40 pounds ago. <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh no. And so I'm like spiraling like in shame, like spiraling in shame. So, but I'm not saying anything. He's not saying right. anything. And he's like being really distant and short and quiet, know, quiet. And I don't like that. Cause I'm like something that's not what's Kobe. Going on? So what's wrong? Right. And he's like, uh, and he just said, I'm spiraling in shame, body shame. Mm -hmm. And that was an opportunity for me. Cause I'm like, well, no, like, Oh, I'll, it's not that. And the pants are too, I shrunk the pants or whatever, fix it, make it go away. Um, but it wasn't that it was, um, just letting you, you didn't listen. fix it. I didn't yeah. fix it. And because I knew I couldn't, right. It's his stuff. And so I just listened. And then during church, I just, I gave him the physical touch that he needs. And that like is the best ever. Right. Yeah. And then, um, he shared a little bit more with me later. So that was a good example. Great example. Not, not tooting my own horn, but right. Of that, of yeah, stooting my own horn. No. Because that wasn't, you, you didn't respond from a selfish place. You were just, I want to just. Be and there Brandon for you. went into it further. Like I could have done even more. I could have right. um, built him back up. Right. Instead of trying to fix it. Right. Sure. But but once you got, you, you got to first connect to that, that uncomfortableness, that shame. And, uh, and that's what you did. You just stayed there with him. Like, you know, you know, another thing, Kobe, is you did something right, too. You got vulnerable. In, in, in your moment when you were trying to isolate and shut down, you just said, Oh, no, hey. I, I was, actually. <laughs> well, okay. For about, for you, about 15 minutes, I yeah. was. But, but you caught However, yourself, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and then you, you just threw it out there to Ashlyn, and, yeah. and she held that space for you. And, guys, what we're talking about is real intimacy. Like, this is connecting on an emotional level in your relationship. So when she's not fixing it, but you're also getting vulnerable... Then, then you have real connection, right? That was awesome. So, yeah. so, and it was, it was hugely meaningful for me that you did that. It was, and and not only was it connecting, but it opened the door to have additional conversations about it after church, which was, which was. Super and the cool. ironic thing is, the next day he was like looking in the mirror, like, "Oh, I love my arms." Like, <laughs> my deltoid, it's all round and everything. He was, I was like, like yeah, "Body was... <laughs> love, like a hundred percent." Yeah, I was like, <laughs> I totally rebounded actually. So it, so it was cool. <laughs> Um, because I was able to speak my shame and Ashlyn didn't make it about her either being uncomfortable. She was okay being uncomfortable and she also didn't make it about her because Ashlyn runs a fitness business and has helped, I don't know how many people like get over the same kind of issues and, and provide solutions, but she was not providing solutions. She right. was like spouse was super right. Cool. So here's the question. Be super prescriptive. Brandon, what for, for, for the guy who is the incessant fixer, right? Girl. Right. Or girl. What what are some like two or three steps that they can deploy? Okay, good. First off, you need to you need to kind of get mindful of how you try to fix, and so and we do it in different ways. We might give out just straight advice like do this, do that. Um, we might try to lead somebody in some direction, um, give them resources. So notice how you're trying to fix it. Like what are you trying to do? Okay, so that's the first thing. Become mindful. Secondly, check your own uncomfortableness. What are you afraid of? Like when, measure it? It's like... Yeah, when, or, or what emotion are you feeling from them that you have a hard time with? So maybe it's sadness. Like, ugh, like she's feeling sad and I don't want to feel sad with her. So try to identify the underlying emotion, but take that one step further and identify the emotion that you're trying to avoid and that you have a hard time connecting with them on. And then learn how to communicate in a way to them that just basically says, I'm here for you. Like, I, I hear you. I see you. I'm there. I can listen. I'm what, available. What could that look like? Like, I, I, cause this, I think that's goes so good. That's kind so of good. what we said at the workshop for me, it was, um, and I went through this, I think with Amy, but like recognizing what I need when I'm in that moment, uh -huh. like I'm just sharing emotions and I don't need you to fix it. I don't need you to like hold me or I don't, but some people do need you to, like, like he does me. want me to hold right. him, but being able to say that. But, but Ashlyn, sometimes you might not know what you need. And that's the whole point is yeah. you're bouncing it off of him and, and, and you're just exploring with her. Mm -hmm. Like right. you're, you're kind of asking questions and uh, like ref reflecting back what you're hearing from her, mm -hmm. but you're kind of flushing it out for you. Right. Rather than, and, and even if you think you see it first, like, no, 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 this is, this is where you're at and this mm -hmm. is what's going on. Don't do that. That's mm -hmm. fixing it. That's, 
just stay there with her and help her flush it out, right? So that could be something like, okay, oh, and, and for me, I would always, what was really hard to do is to not think, like, to, it was really hard for me to not think of a solution. Right. That, and if I was thinking of a solution, I was not listening for understanding, like, to really understand where she was coming from. And so that distinction is like the edge of a knife, right? And it's so hard to balance what that is, but... Um, I remember, I remember one time, I don't remember what specifically, but I was like, okay, I'm really trying to listen to what you're saying here. And because this is important to me. Is this what, this is what I heard you say. Is this, is this right? You've said something similar to that, right? As yeah. far as like how I can respond. So that you make sure because, you understand. And, and, be, and right. I've had to come back a couple times to say, is this it? Right. Like, is, is this right? Or I'm yeah. having a hard time getting it and I can't quite see how you're feeling, but I want to. Yeah. But, right? and the great thing is I'll come back and say, no, that's not what yeah. I mean feeling like we've done that before yeah a trip I was going to take alone and I was feeling anxious and mm -hmm. things and he just kept trying to like well you could do this and you could do that and I was like no like, I'm not I'm I'm okay I'm okay going I'm just feeling anxious right just hold just hold that an yeah. anxiety mm -hmm. for me mm -hmm. a little bit so those are like yeah. super super great recommendations yeah. on what you can do again those real quick again we're what just, just uh, be, be mindful of the way that you try to fix okay identify what um, what emotions you're uncomfortable with and start to learn how to how to feel those things and, and tolerate those things and then lastly communicate back to them that that you are there for them and that you care right? that's awesome so that's awesome have you guys seen the the video it's not about the nail on YouTube no, no. if you haven't seen it it's exactly what we're talking about and it just I'll tell the quick story this this woman sitting there with a nail in her forehead Oh. She's complaining about pain in her head. That's I'm like, barbaric. It's so horrible and this and that. And, and the guy's like, well, if you just take that nail out of your head. <laughs> she's like, I don't want you to fix it. <laughs> and oh, finally wow. he gets to this point where she's like, she's like, gosh, it's so painful and so hard. And he, and he just says, gosh, that, that must really be hard. And, she, and like relief, like, yeah, that's how I feel. <laughs> so go check that out. Um, Noted for sure. Um, yeah. This was awesome. And this is something that can be deployed super quickly and easily. We hope that if you're listening to this, that you'll find application in your relationship uh, with your partner. Because this is this, I'm gonna find. I find application like right now. In, in this I, I, right I gotta here. say one thing before we end is, there is a space where it's it's good to fix it. And do you guys know when it is? Uh, clearly no. It's <laughs> it's <laughs> like I, I'll I'll do this with my wife. Where look, I want your advice. I want your thoughts. Like, what can I do here? So it's when I ask for it. Like, I look, I can't see my way out of this. What do you think? Like, can you help That's me here? Good. So when the other person is asking for the answers, mm -hmm. and if you see them, then give them. Mm -hmm. Right. But first make sure that they're asking for that, because maybe they're just asking for connection, right? I think that's that awesome. goes for Facebook, too. You don't have to tell everyone <laughs> the answer in their comments. That is, they are not that is very true. <laughs> just give empathy. Yes. <laughs> okay, guys, if you've enjoyed this, please share this. Um, if you like what you're hearing on this podcast, then please hop on and give us a review. Love to have those. That helps us in a huge way to make sure that more people hear this. So... Till next time, peace out. Bye.